The first step for creating a functional VJ console is content selection. The media control button provides you with the possibility to select content from thumbnails and directly load it on a device in Pandora's box. You can find this widget in the toolbar. When you take a look at the item properties, you will see that you can enter a device ID analogously to the device ID in the fader. You can also customize the widget by adjusting the size and the number of the button rows. The thumbnails to be shown can be selected with the folder ID dropdown. As you can see, this dropdown is still empty because there are no thumbnails available yet. Before you can download thumbnails, make sure that the content has file and folder IDs assigned. Also, the CITP exchange must be activated in Pandora's box to allow the transfer of thumbnails. Go to Configuration, Remote Control Protocols and press the Exchange Thumbnails button. To load the images in Widget Designer, go to the Pandora's Box Configuration dialog and scroll down to the CITP section. Now press the Download Thumbnails button. The download progress is displayed in the bar below. You can check the thumbnails in the browser. If you go back to the media control properties, you will see that the drop-down now contains the two folders that are assigned in Pandora's box. As soon as you select one, the media control buttons are filled with the thumbnails. When you press on one of the images in run mode, Pandora's box immediately loads the respective content. When you are working on a project, don't forget to save your work regularly. It is also sometimes helpful to save different versions of your projects to be able to go back to a certain state. Widget Designer offers you three options for saving a project. Just save overrides the current project file. Save as creates a new file with a new name and keeps the new file as a working copy. For saving different states of the project, use Save Copy. It creates a new file with the current state, but keeps on editing the old file. What else does a VJ console need? Certainly the possibility to fade between two different media files without a hard cut. This can be achieved by setting up two separate media control buttons for two separate devices and a fader to crossfade between them. Copy the media control button you already have and exchange the device and folder ID. Next, create a horizontal fader and place it between the media controls. For a proper crossfade, you only need to fade the topmost device in Pandora's box. In this case, it is device 2.2.
And as you can see right away, a crossfade is installed. You might have noticed that the videos you have loaded on your Pandora's Box devices are not playing back. To do so, you need to issue a play command. As you are working with active values in Pandora's Box and not with clips stored on the sequence, you have to address the device playback transport and not the sequence itself. The command for directly inferencing any parameter on all Pandora's Box devices is device set param. Create a custom script button. As you will continue to add buttons to your interface, you should label them according to what they do in the Button Styles tab to keep an overview. You already know what command you need, so you can start typing it in the on press script window. Script Assist shows you what parameter this command requires. Site and Device ID which are 2 and 1 for video layer 1. For the parameter name, Script Assist offers you a list of available parameter names from which you can select. The last value depends on which device parameter you are addressing. If you, for example, wanted to adjust the opacity, it would be a numerical value between 0 and 255. The playback transport uses the state written as words. So it would be play, pause, stop and loop. Don't forget to do the same for the second device. If you now press the button, your videos will play back. Now for a little creative element, video speed control. With the fader for each device you will accelerate or slow down the playback. You have already learned how to select a fader widget from the toolbar. Now try to create one from the right click menu. Enter the device ID you want to control and select the playback speed parameter from the drop-down. If you take a look at your Pandora's Box interface, you see that the speed parameter ranges from 11% to nearly 500%. But this does not necessarily mean that your fader needs these as minimum and maximum value. If you want to know what this parameter expects as remote input, take a look at the help file. There is a shortcut that leads you directly to the page you need. Here, all Pandora's box parameters are listed with their respective value range. And you see that the speed does require a value between 0 and 255. No adjustment is necessary. The speed fader already works. The last thing to do is to copy the fader and set it up for the second device by replacing the device ID.
The next item on the list is a smooth crossfade between the two videos. Pulling the fader is not an ideal solution, which is why you will need another button to automate the fade. First, create another custom script button. As you now have two different states, fading from video 1 to video 2 and backwards. A simple click button is not sufficient here. When you open the settings drop down in the custom script properties, you can switch between the click and toggle type. The click type releases the button state instantly as soon as the mouse click is released. The toggle button, on the other hand, remains in a pressed state until it is clicked again. Now you can use onPress and onRelease script separately. Enter the fade up command to the onPress script, add the fader widget ID and a fade time. Enter the fade down command to the onRelease script with widget ID and time parameters again. Like with the play button before, you should label your crossfade button to know what it does. But wouldn't it be great if the button also indicated whether it is going to fade up or down the next time it is pressed? The button label, like most elements you find in the style section, is scriptable. Use the command wd custom script label to set a new label every time you click on the button. The command requires two parameters. First, the custom script button ID, which is 2 here, and second, the label text, for example, an arrow symbol. Add the same command to the onRelease script and change the direction of the arrow and you are done. Now you can also change the color of the button the same way. Use the command wd custom script tint. This one is a little different, as it requires the red, green and blue component of the color you want to apply. Colors in Widget Designer have a bit depth of 8-bit, which means that each of the three channels can have a value between 0 and 255. Magenta, for example, consists of red and blue at maximum and has no green part. If your button tint is supposed to be magenta then, you need to enter 255 for red, 0 for green and 255 for blue. The color for the other direction could be a nice orange, for example this one. When you now press the button, the color changes. A more elegant solution than the written arrow on the button label is to use an image with the proper arrow on it as the image for the button itself. You can find two images prepared for this purpose in the file package you have downloaded at the beginning of this training. First, go to the button style section and remove the characters from the label. Below the label you find the fields for release, click and highlight image files. The Reese button opens the widget designer internal repository for all kinds of button images. If you want to add your own design, open a browser and select a file from the system. Use the second file with the arrow pointing in the other direction for the release image and you are done. Don't forget to remove the script commands for the button label.
Now it is time to get to know one of the most useful and versatile widgets, the label. You can not only use it for structuring your interface by adding text, headlines and captions. The label text is also scriptable and a perfect element for dynamically displaying text-based data. When you open the item properties of the label, you see a lot of configurable parameters. Apart from the label's appearance, you can assign it to display certain information such as the computer time, and the time code of a specified Pandora's box sequence. In the second grade training, you will learn how to use a label to display a global variable and some other applications for a dynamic display. For now, you can start by labeling your various faders with speed and crossfade and your media control buttons with their respective devices.